you're probably wondering why your Home Assistant dashboard suddenly looks like Frozen 3. No, your system hasn't been hacked by Santa. This is the brand new winter mode hiding inside the new label section. And today we are covering everything that's changing in Home Assistant 2025.12, the last release of the year. We look at the labs, automations, energy dashboard upgrades, the integrations that got real improvements, and surprise or two. Let's jump right in in a couple of seconds. Let's start with something brand new. If you go to Settings, System, there is a new option called Labs. Think of it as a sandbox where developers can give us early access to experimental features before they officially land. It's opt-in, it's safe, it lets you test the future of Home Assistant today. Labs is basically, here is something cool, try it, break it, tell us what exploded and how do you like it. This is great for the community and for everyone who loves new features but doesn't want to run nightly builds or break their automation setup accidentally. But also note, these are not beta features or alpha features. These are fully functional features that may or may not end up in the future versions of Home Assistant. So how do they work? When you go to Labs, for each of the options that will be introduced to the lab section, you have to opt in for that one. When you press Enable, it will ask you if you want to do a backup. For the purpose of this video, I will not be doing backup, hopefully I do have a backup working from a couple of hours ago. Then you just enable it, and this new feature is automatically added to Home Assist. As you can see, I've enabled also Winter Mode, but if I disable it, it will automatically stop the snow falling in my system. It's like running automation to skip winter and jump straight into March. But best thing of all is if you do enable winter mode for the dashboards or any option inside Home Assistant, this feature will automatically pop up on all of the devices, your PCs, tablets and also your mobile phones. Same applies if you, for example, press disable, then the feature will be disabled for all of the devices that have Home Assistant app on them. Now let's talk automations, because this update brings a big quality of life improvement and also the first feature inside the Home Assistant Labs. Triggers and conditions have been redesigned. They are clearer, cleaner, they are more visual. So let's compare. If you go to Settings, Automations, Create Automation and click on Create New Automation, this is what we are accustomed to. Add Trigger, we have here Triggers, Devices, Entities, Time Location or something else. For the conditions, we already had improvements by adding blocks, which we didn't have previously. Then for the actions, we have all of the domains or blocks that we can use inside our automations. If in labs we enable this feature, once again skip the backup, enable it, create new automation will pop up something different. If we click on add trigger, we now have targets or triggers. Triggers are what we had previously, but targets is something brand new. For example, I want to target the second floor, loft, and then device that's located there, for example, Elgato Key Light Air. Here I can select if I want to turn the light on or off. So I click on the plus sign. We have everything added here. If we compare it to the previous one, where we had to go to triggers, then select light, then turn off the light, then add target, then type in the Elgato, select it. It's now much more simple. You can select target instead of trigger. If we go to actions, we also have targets, actions and blocks. Previously we already had blocks and actions, but once again we also have targets. We can target, for example, the labels, if you have labels in your system. We can select services. For example, this one here, Calibrate Utility Meter, or we can target specific devices, entities, or, as we already mentioned, specific areas on specific floors. For example, bathroom, bedroom, media player, play next. Everything feels more logical, beginner-friendly, but still powerful for advanced users. This update is perfect for people who say, I want to do this thing to that thing when this thing happens. 
but only if this other thing is true also. You know, normal Home Assistant users. The builder now shows options in more intuitive flow. It's easier to choose right trigger, easier to understand what's happening and harder to make a weird logic mistake. This 2025.12 release really wraps up the year in style. Smoother UI, better device controls and Home Assistant just keeps getting smarter. But while our homes level up, we also need to level up on our online privacy. And for that, I use Shark VPN. Just like Home Assistant gives you control over your home, Surfsharks give you control over your online life. Whenever you browse, update dashboards or check your smart home remotely, that traffic is exposed to ISPs, advertisers and yes, occasional board hacker. Surfshark encrypts all of it, keeping your data private and secure. Holiday travel, free airport Wi-Fi, suspicious hotel networks called definitely not a hacker. With Surfshark, your connection stays protected anywhere. Plus, Surfshark lets you connect unlimited devices on a single account. Your phone, your tablet, your laptop, your partner's device, even the old dashboard tablet you mounted to wall. Everything stays protected. And one of the best features I love in Surfshark is Alternative ID. It generates a masked name and email for signups, perfect for testing new integrations without giving away personal information. Head to surfshark.com slash ticker, that's my link, and you'll get an exclusive deal. Four extra months for free, plus a 30-day money-back guarantee. Protect your digital life while you automate your real one. Get Surfshark today. Now let's talk about something a lot of people rely on. That's Energy Dashboard. This release improves power and water section with smoother graphing, more accurate consumption tracking, better units and more consistent history. If you have solar, smart plugs, water meters, heat pumps or anything energy related, this is a nice upgrade. And yes, besides energy tracking, we can now also set up individual power tracking. Just for each individual device, click on pencil sign and select the device power consumption. Save it, wait a couple of hours for statistics to build in the system and you will be presented with the real-time power usage of each device and not just total energy consumption. We have a new dashboard, which is something that was beta dashboard or pre-release dashboard. Now it's just a home dashboard. It has new navigation on the right side, but also one thing that can help you fixed. For example, where each room is located is if you go to settings, areas, you can now move around areas inside floors or even between floors. And that way you can customize the look and feel of your home. For example, if I move this dining room here as the first room, and then I move bathroom on the second floor. We go back to the home dashboard, dining room and bathroom. The alignment will propagate through all of the home assistant. That's the new home assistant 2025.12 release. A little bit of fun with winter mode, a big quality jump with the new automations, some great updates to integrations and a stronger energy dashboard. I must say thanks to the wonderful people supporting me and who have become YouTube channel members. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But also, let's not forget each and every one of you who watched, shared, liked or commented on my videos. Thank you. If you want to support the channel, you can become a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can visit my merchandise store and pick up something there. And last but not least, you can send me a super thanks and I'll be a super thankful for that. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.